Today I want to continue the discussion, and I will say it's an extremely sensitive discussion, but it's a very needed discussion based upon how many questions I've got from you out there on how does the betrayed spouse regain confidence after infidelity. It's a wonderful question, and I, I hope that what we talked about last time helped, and I want to go a step further today. Keep in mind, I'm not a betrayed spouse, I don't pretend to be an expert on this, but I will tell you, I've, I've lived with one for 11 years. I help a lot of them. I've done a lot of reading and communication uh, with betrayed spouses and even some of our therapists about this. One of the ways that Samantha regained a ton of confidence was finding the right support group. It's funny. She went to an EMS with me, obviously, and she met some women who were equally struggling. Their situation was not as bad as ours. But they were also struggling, and it was funny. Samantha felt normal because she was talking to other women who were hurting and experiencing the same trauma and the same trauma effects and the same pain and the same reminders and triggers, and it normalized things for her. She felt more confidence because she didn't feel like she was a basket case. She didn't feel like she was the worst, and she wasn't the worst in terms of how she was handling the trauma. But she didn't know that until she got around these other women. Now, please keep in mind, these other women were not just sitting around commiserating. They were, at the EMS weekend, expressing their hurt, expressing their pain. And there was a sense of unity there because Samantha felt like she finally found some women who could relate to her. You see, nobody in her life, when disclosure happened, could relate to her. Every woman that she knew said to her, oh my gosh, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. There was shock and awe in their eyes. None of them could relate. None of them could understand. None of them could, at any level, comfort her with a lot of impacting words or principles because none of them had ever been through it. When Samantha found the right people, there was a confidence that came because she, number one, realized she wasn't crazy. Number two, realized that she was in real pain and her pain was validated because what she was expressing was exactly what these other women were expressing. Number three, she felt like she could let her guard down with people that weren't going to attack her, shame her, or judge her. Now, another part of that was when she would talk to those other women, when she was around those other women, they would encourage her. They would say, how are you doing? You know, I'm praying for you. Or I was thinking about you the other day, and I wanted to reach out, but I didn't. And so she uh, would go meet with these women sometimes and go, you know, have a drink or just relax or go spend some time, walk in the park. I mean, there was a confidence that came because she no longer felt like the red-headed stepchild of trauma. She felt like, man, I've got other women who are around me, supporting me, and I don't feel like just a complete train wreck every part of every day of every week. Now, another facet to helping the betrayed spouse regain confidence is forgiveness. Now, I know that that's kind of like a formality. Oh, forgiveness. Yeah, it's the right thing. But let me break it down a little bit for you. I'll never forget a day where Samantha came to me and said, you know, today I felt like I was able to forgive another level of your asinine behavior. She said it just like that. <laughs> I was like stumped. What do you say after that? What, what's your retort? I was like speechless. I said, awesome. And I just kind of sat there. I felt like I was on stage, naked, in front, of, in front of a bunch of people who all had paint guns that were just shooting me. I just, I was kind of like, great. And she said, OK, that kind of came out wrong. But what I mean is, I feel like today I was able to forgive you a little bit more, and I am so at peace today. I feel so much more level emotionally. 
Now, let me explain to you that forgiveness is not a one-time deal when you're dealing with infidelity. It is a process, and it has several layers, and it takes a pretty good amount of time to work through those layers. And just when you thought that you had found a great level of, of momentum in one level, you're probably going to, early on, bump up against another level that's going to take some work. But she had gained some ground. And you could see there was a little bit more sparkle in her eye. There was a little bit more pep in her step. There was actually some peace in her daily activities because she had gained ground in more forgiveness for my asinine behavior. So if you're struggling with confidence today, maybe you need to get some safer people around. Maybe it's another level of forgiveness that you're going to have to walk through. Maybe you need to write down some things that you still may be bitter about. Remember, forgiveness is for you, the betrayed. Yes, it will play out with the unfaithful. We'll talk about that another time. But first and foremost, forgiveness unlocks the prison doors that are around you and sets you free. Do you need to set yourself free a little bit more today? Do you need to find another level of freedom today? Because one of the chief ways that it will come is through forgiveness. Mm -hmm.